Hey everyone, it's been a little while since I've uploaded anything to YouTube. That's because I've been spending most of my time re-recording my advanced course, Vue.js 3 The Composition API. What I am going to do over the next few days is upload some of the lectures for free on YouTube, just to give everyone an idea of what the course is like, and even if you don't intend on taking it, you can still learn a couple of tips and tricks when it comes to using Vue with the Composition API and using Vue Test Utils. If you are interested, this is the kind of content we're going to be covering. We'll look at Teleport and Suspense, the new Reactivity API, TypeScript, building a reactive store from scratch, third-party libraries from NPM, Vue Router, and Vue Test Utils. It is going to be available on both Gumroad as well as on Udemy, and I'll put a link to a discount coupon for both of those platforms in the description. Anyway, in this first lecture, we're going to be taking a look at how you can test components that use Teleport. Just to give you a quick introduction to what we're going to be testing, we have over here sign up and sign in. These are both inside of a component called the navbar, and I'd like to test that one in isolation. If I click on the sign up button, it is going to render this modal, and this is rendered using teleport. This is going to give us a slight problem. We are mounting the navbar component in isolation, but the teleport target is outside of the component. It's going to be right up here in the top of the DOM hierarchy, and we're going to see a few tips and tricks on how you might approach testing this. Just to give you a quick idea of how this works, in the course we build this use modal composable, and it has, has several features. The first is going to be this component up here, which is going to be dynamic, something you can easily change. We're also going to have show modal and hide modal to show and hide the modal. If we come over here on the left to the navbar component, we have this teleport component here, and it's going to teleport to an element which is not in this component, it's outside of it. So we're going to have to find some way to replicate this inside of our tests. We also have this dynamic component here, which is going to bind to this component, which is eventually going to be related to this ref over here. If we scroll up a little bit, we have sign in and we also have sign up. If we go and have a look at this sign up method down here, we're going to see how this works. Basically, we're going to set that modal value to be a component, in this case, sign up, and that's referring to this component over here. We're using mark raw, this is a bit of a reactivity optimization. And after we go ahead and assign this one, we're going to call show modal. And what this is going to do is use teleport to render that component dynamically at the very top of the DOM hierarchy. Again, this does introduce some complexities in testing. So in this next lecture, we're going to go over some of the details and see how you can do this kind of testing using view test utils. Let's go ahead and jump into the lecture. Again, if you are interested, I'll put a link to both these platforms in the description. And if you do find this content useful, you might enjoy the rest of the course as well. The final test we're going to be writing for this section is to do with the navbar component and teleport. Let's just have a quick reminder of how this one works. We have a button here which says sign up. And when we click on this, it's going to call this show function. If we scroll down here, we can see the show function is going to call modal.showmodal. In practice, clicking on this button is going to show this modal with the username and the password, and this is rendered via a teleport. Just to confirm how this one works, we have a teleport here, which is going to teleport to this modal element. This modal element is at the very top level inside of app.view. Here it is. It's not going to be displayed by default, and that's because of this style binding. If we scroll down here and have a look at the computed style binding, we can say that the display here is going to either be block or none. By default, it's going to be none, but when we show the modal, it's going to become block, and we can see the modal is rendered correctly. Clicking on this is going to hide the modal. So we'd like to test the navbar component. What this means we need to do is test this teleport component as well. So I'd like to ensure that this is correctly shown, and I can fill out the form and submit it and create a new user. I've created a very simple test file just to get us started. All I'm doing here is mounting my navbar component, and I'm providing a store as well, because we need to provide a store for this component to work correctly. I'm going to go ahead and run this one in watch mode, and then we're going to let the errors guide our development. So let's go ahead and run our navbar spec. There is going to be some complexity here, mainly to do with teleport. Because we're isolating this component and rendering it via mount, the teleport target doesn't exist, and we have that error here. We also have an error relating to view router, and I'm going to show you some techniques to work around view router in your tests. We have a few options for view router. The first option would just be to use a real router, but this doesn't work as well as you might expect in practice. Let's go ahead and see why, and then we're going to see how we can work around that. I'm going to import both create router and create web history. 
Let's go ahead and provide this as a plugin. We currently have one plugin in our store, and we're going to have one more now, which is going to be create router. This does take two arguments. The first one is going to be the history type. In this case, we're going to use create web history. We also need to provide some routes. I'm just going to provide an empty array for now. We do in fact have an error here. Let's see if we can figure out what the error is. Uh, it says that I've spelled this incorrectly. I guess it should be create router, and there we go. Let's save it off and see what happens. We are going to see the original error to do with router link is gone, but now we have a new error. It says no match found for location with slash. The problem here is we haven't mounted the full component hierarchy and we haven't provided any of our routes. The router expects to have a full router and a full application, but we're mounting this component in isolation. So in practice, this is not going to work too well. There is an alternative here though. If I go ahead and delete those, save this one off, we're going to be back to where we started with a different warning. In this case, we're going to have the warning to do with router link. What we can do is simply provide our own mock router link. And we can do this by using the components global option. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is provide my own router link and it's just going to be a very simple stub. In this case, I'm going to have an empty div. Let's save this one off and see what happens. And just like that, the warning is gone. We're providing the correct router link component or we're providing a router link component and now view router is not complaining anymore. We do have a different warning here though, and that's to do with teleport. It's looking for this modal which doesn't exist at the moment. Of course it does exist in our actual application. It's over here inside of app.view at the very top, but we're mounting our navbar, which is down here in isolation. What we need to do is have some way to access this element. And there is a few different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you a very simple way now, and then we're going to see some of the pros and cons associated with this technique. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new element by using document.createElement. It's just going to be a div. The next thing I'm going to do is set the ID to be modal. And finally, we're going to do document.body.appendChild and append this element. Let's save it off and see what happens. We can see now that warning is going to be gone. Just to show you exactly what's going on here, I'm going to do a console log on document.body.outerHTML and we're going to see what is currently rendered. You might expect to see two things, this modal element and our component HTML, but that is not actually the case. We have got our modal here, which is correct, but we're not seeing any of the nav bar HTML. What's happening here is by default, view test utils does not mount these on the actual DOM. It just creates an element in memory. For the purpose of this test, I'd like to correctly mount this on the DOM alongside my modal component. What we can do is use the attach to option, and this is going to attach it to a specified element. In this case, it's going to be document.body. If we go ahead and save this one off now, we should see a little bit more HTML rendered. We're going to see both our modal, which is here. See, we have our username and our password inputs. And if we look down here, we also have our navbar. You can see the navbar class is here, and we're going to have all of those buttons like sign up and everything else. So the next thing we need to do is find some way to interact with our modal. So for example, I'd like to be able to interact with this, filling out the username and the password, make an assertion and then submit this form. And this is going to be a little tricky. What we could do is try something like wrapper.find. So let's go ahead and see what happens. What I'm going to do is just say await wrapper.find and let's just try and find, for example, this form. So we can try and use form and with a bit of luck, this was going to work. I would expect this to find an element. I can actually use get, which is going to erase an error if it doesn't find the correct element. Let's save it off and see what happens. And we're actually going to see this is going to fail. It didn't find the correct element. What's happening here is we're using wrapper.get, which is only going to search inside of our wrapper. It's not going to search outside of that. And we need to be looking outside of that. We need to look for the document body HTML. We do have a few other options here and view test utils has a few tricks up its sleeve to help us out. While we cannot use wrapper.get to search on the real DOM, we can search through the virtual DOM, which is how view renders components. I created this uh, diagram to help you a little bit. So over here on the right, we have the navbar component. And over here on the left, we have the ultimate render target, which is going to be a different element. Although the HTML the actual DOM element is separate, it turns out we maintain the same virtual DOM structure. What this means in practice, if this is a little bit confusing, is we can use a different API called get component to be able to access this element correctly. The first thing I'm going to do is jump up here. And we're going to import the component we'd like to find. In this case, I'd like to find the signup component. Just to confirm, the signup component is the one rendered inside of this teleport, 
which is going to be teleported to our DOM element. Now that we've imported that component, we can go ahead and search for that. What we're going to do is say wrapper.get component, and we're going to pass in our sign up form. And this is going to be able to be found. Let's save it off and see what happens. With a bit of luck, we're not going to have any errors, and we can see it was correctly found. Just to make it very clear what's going on, I'm going to actually assign this to a variable. So I'm going to say await or const, let's just call this one form, and we're going to say await wrapper.get component. I actually don't need await, I'm going to delete that one. And finally, we're going to do a console log on form just to see what this one is. We're going to see this is a view wrapper. If we scroll up here, we can see we have actually got access to that view component. And we can also access all the variables like update or username status, username submit, and so on and so forth. Calling this form with a dollar sign is a little bit misleading. It's not actually a DOM element. I'm going to delete this one. We're getting access to the raw view component here. This is quite convenient. We can now go ahead and interact with it. Let's head over to the sign up form and just make sure we know what we're working with. So we have a few different elements. We have two inputs and we have one button. I'd like to have some way to easily interact with these inputs. So let's have a look at the form input component. We can see here we have this input. What I'm going to do is give it an ID and just bind to the name prop, which is going to be username or password. This is going to make it very easy to interact with these inputs. Let's go ahead now and make some assertions. If we scroll down here, we have this big mess of HTML and we can see we're getting the correct validation. We have this error here, the value must be between 10 and 40. And that's exactly what we have over here. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure this assertion is going to not be here. So once we filled out this form, we shouldn't have this error anymore. So let's go ahead and first make sure that assertion is correct. I'm going to write an assertion down here with expect. We are going to make an assertion against document.body.html. In this case, it should contain this validation. Let's save it off and see what happens. Of course, it is passing. The next thing I'm going to do is fill out the username and password fields. So what we can do is something like this. I'm going to say form and we're going to use our find. We're going to search for those elements, in this case, the username and password fields. So we can use the selector with name and just say the name should be equal to, in this case, it is going to be username or password. Let's start off with username. And I think that is the correct syntax. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Again, we can use get, which is going to throw an error if this element is not found. Just to show you what happens, if I make a mistake here, save it off, that is going to fail because it couldn't find this element. If we revert it, we can see it's passing, so it was able to find the element. The next thing I'm going to do is update the value by saying set value, and this is just going to become username. Finally, I'm going to do it again, this time for password. And let's go ahead and put in a, ni a nice long password to get rid of that validation error. It has to have a minimum length of 10. So in this case, I'm just going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we save it off, we're going to hopefully not see this error anymore. We are in fact getting an error here. Wrapper.set cannot be called on label. It looks like we made a mistake. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. My first instinct is always to use a wait just to make sure everything is updated correctly, but that is not working as we would expect. I think I'm searching for this incorrectly. What I should be doing is searching based on the ID. So I'm going to change this one just to be username. By using name, I think what's happening here is I'm actually selecting this label up here, which has this name binding. I should be searching for the ID. Let's go ahead and change that one to make it correct. So this should be username. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. Save it off and we can see the error is now gone. Let's go ahead and repeat the same process for password. I'm just going to go ahead and replicate the process here and the error is still gone. And finally, we should be able to make this assertion and turn it around and say not contain and we can see that assertion is working correctly. The final step is going to be submitting this form, and this is going to be fairly easy. If we head over to the sign up component, all we need to do is trigger submit.prevent, and this is going to be on the very root element. So let's go ahead and do that. All we need to do is say await form, and then we're going to make our submission, so we can just say trigger submit.prevent. This is one of the nice things about view test utils. You can actually pass in the exact same syntax here, to match up with the one you have over in your form. Save this off and see what happens. We are getting a console log from store. Just to show you exactly what's going on, it's coming down here and calling the create user function, and this is matching up to what I was expecting. If we head back to the sign up component, scroll down here, we have this method here, which says create user. 
and that's going to be called, and all we're doing at the moment is doing a console log. We can't actually assert against this because all we're doing is console logging, but in the future when we create users, we're going to save these to the state, and then we will be able to make an assertion. Either way, I think this is definitely a good start. We have a nice test suite here that's going to tell us if we break anything. As you should always do a test just to make sure they're working correctly, I am going to make this one fail just to verify it's doing exactly what I think it is. For example, let's say we don't call this function, or rather let's do something different. For example, maybe we go ahead and uh, remove this button. If we remove this button, or maybe a better example would be to remove the inputs, we should see a nice failure there. If we save this one off, we are going to see a bunch of errors. It couldn't find the correct validation, and that makes sense. We're not rendering the input anymore, so we're also not going to be rendering that validation error. We're getting all this uh, HTML here, but it doesn't contain the one you would expect. If we go ahead and undo that one, it is going to pass. So I am fairly confident everything is now working correctly. We did cover quite a bit of content here. Let's just quickly review it. So what we needed to do for our teleport was create the element to teleport to and append it to the actual DOM so it could be found. I then attached the actual component using attach to the body as well, just to make it more consistent. I decided to start out my router link component because it was giving me some problems. We then provided the store like we need to. And then we just used get component to be able to interact with the component. Even though it's technically rendered outside of the wrapper, we're still able to get access to it because Vue maintains a virtual DOM structure, which contains this component. We then just went ahead and made our usual assertions. We used the usual view API, which has things like get and set value. Then we made another assertion as well, and everything is working as expected.